manager with Calgary Scientific. Uh, essentially, we uh, specialize in web and mobile enablement technologies. And so today, what I want to uh, show to you is how you can take your Qt Widget desktop application, extend that to be a back-end service that still carries out the rendering and the whole business logic, but is accessible from web and mobile devices. So the challenge in this context is, is you have a Qt Widget-based desktop application that particularly has one or more of these features. So it deals with big or sensitive data. It uh, deals with high performance processing or rendering capabilities, and as such, requires specific hardware to run uh, effectively. Uh, with the advent of BYOD, bring your own device, uh, increased telecommuting, the way in which people want to access applications is changing. So if you're wanting to make this accessible from anywhere, uh, anytime, and on any device, then you have to deal with, certainly you want to maintain real-time interactive performance. You don't want to lose any of that. You want to maintain the data security. Uh, you don't want to worry about uh, devices being compromised and people losing their devices and uh, important data being lost. Uh, the same perspective, if you, your application deals with big data, you simply can't transform, transfer all of that data to the client side for rendering at that site uh, just because it might not be feasible. Furthermore, the end user devices might not have the full capability of processing or rendering that you need for your particular application. You want to make sure that this is a flexible interface. You don't just want to remote desktop or screen scrape and have a, a desktop on your iPad because it doesn't work uh, quite that well. And furthermore, with uh, remote workforce, distributed people, you want new opportunities to collaborate and share and have people work on this data together. And so we offer a solution. It's uh, what we call Pure Web. And essentially, there's three different components to this. At the one layer, we've got the uh, Pure Web Service APIs that can integrate with your application. So we have APIs in C++, uh, in, in which in case supports Qt, uh, .NET, and Java as well. And this really allows you to take your application, extend it, expose different views and functionality that you want available to clients, then also map back input that you get from the clients into your application. On the client side, you're able to write thin clients using one of our client APIs, uh, in which case we have HTML5, we have iOS and Android APIs as well, also looking into a possibility of uh, a Qt Quick API as well, so that you could have uh, front end and back end development all on Qt. And essentially, this lets you create a very thin uh, client that just uh, receives updated images and views from this service, where you can still do native UI design and elements around that, customize things to the form factor and uh, size and uh, capabilities of these new mobile devices. And then sitting in the middle is the peer web server. And it acts as the mediator for communication between your service and your client. It's built on top of an Apache Tomcat server. And it'll handle your session management, your application lifecycle, so starting and stopping of the application as requests come in, and authentication and other services as well. So a bit more about what the peer web enablement process involves. How can you actually take your application and make it accessible? And so the first step is setting up connections really between the client and the service. And this is a bunch of boilerplate code that you put inside the client and services. And then you want to select from your application, which is the service now, which views that you actually want to remote, which views you want available on the client side. It could be one view. You could have multiple views. And each one of those will be rendered and handled separately. And essentially, you're copying uh, those images into the pure web imaging pipeline that effectively deals with them and pushes them to your client. Uh, third, you're going to want to deal with events that come back from the client. So the views on the client will automatically intercept mouse and keyboard events. You can also translate touch and gesture events into uh, different events also. And they get sent back into the view and injected in. And then you're able to interact with this application. And so a few other things to help you along the way is the ability to send commands from the client to the service. So in this case, you have your native UI elements on the client side, and you want to map those to functionality back on the service. And so really, you can make your client UIs look completely different than that original desktop application that you have. Have them fit the form factor of that uh, device as you wish. 
And so you can send commands back. They'll get injected into your application and send back updated images and so forth. And further, to help synchronize state between your uh, service and your client, and also in a collaborative case where you actually have multiple clients uh, connecting to the same instance, so everyone can share and interact with that, uh, we have application state, which is essentially an XML file that lets you uh, define your own structure of information and synchronize information back and forth, send differences, and then you're just writing value change handlers on either side to handle changes that come through. And so in all this time, your service is the one. It's carrying out the rendering. It's accessing its data where it happens to now. You don't have to worry about data compromise. You don't have to worry about the hardware performance on the client side because you're able to use the hardware that you need to get the performance that you want. So here's just some sample code snippets of, for example, what is involved. This is just using the standard Qt scribble sample that's uh, widely available. And so this particular code snippet that I've shown is to try and show how you're going to remote a view in your application. And so in this case, you're essentially inheriting any view that you want to remote, you will inherit from iRenderView. And so this is essentially the scribble area Q widget itself. And in doing so, you have to write five different functions within that. A couple that deal with the size of the image, a render view a function, which is shown in the scribble area.cpp, where you're actually copying the image that was rendered on the service into the pure web pipeline, which will then get distributed out to the clients. And then also uh, some functions to map the mouse and keyboard events that are coming back. So essentially, you're receiving these events. You need to essentially translate them into cute mouse and uh, keyboard events. And what does this mean then on the client side? What do you have to include to have that view exposed? In an HTML file, you're essentially adding a div uh, to put it in the layout and size that you want in the UI. And then within the JavaScript file, you're essentially creating a new instance of a pure web view. And so in doing that, the pure web view now will automatically receive any of those images that are coming from that view. You could have multiple views, each with different streams of images coming forth. Uh, currently, we support transmission of images as JPEG or PNG. We're also uh, looking into H.264 right now. And you can also bypass this and add your own uh, renderers as well. And so pure web is in wide use today in a wide variety of image or uh, industries. Uh, particularly, we have medical imaging. Here's a scenario where you have um, a lot of data, intensive GPU rendering. You've got different security standards, regulatory compliance. And now with pure web, it's possible for doctors to be diagnosing images under certain modalities on their iPads, on their mobile devices. Uh, at the convenience of where they happen to be, being able to access and diagnose images faster. And so just as a, here is a medical imaging application. And this is actually, I'm accessing a sugar, uh, server in Chicago. So even with the high latency, very still interactive with that image, different functionality. So you can even from even high latent uh, situations access that well. Certainly, we've taken this into other areas as well, where seismic interpretation, when once again, sensitive oil data, big data. You've got data on the uh, people in the field working, people in the offices that want to collaborate and share. Look at that data at the same time. With PureWeb, they're able to do that. They're able to view that simultaneously and see what each other is working on and interact with that. Also, simulation and training, uh, expensive deployment costs of typically having to install this on every system, fly in a trainer to work with that. Now with PureWeb, they can deploy it in a common location, access it that easily, and you know, phone the friend and both look at it at the same time if they're looking at a sensitive engine or a military uh, plane or so forth and trying to work that through. And certainly a case that has you know, true big data is in the astronomy field. And in the astronomy field right now, they deal with image data sets on the size of a few hundred gigabytes to a terabyte. So these are you know, images that would take several hours to a day to transmit to people. And would they even have the capability to store that much, process that much on their devices? But with PureWeb, because it's running on the server, they can handle that. And with the future coming with the square kilometer array, where data is going to be produced on the order of you know, many petabytes per day, and compare that to like the Large Hadron Collider, which produces many petabytes per year right now. We're talking 
magnitude of improvement in in data and so you know time to cast your vote please vote for me uh if you i'm i'll be here for the conference uh through the end of tomorrow anyone has questions or interest please let me know and if you go to developer.getpeerweb.com you can download your own trial version of pure web and try it out for yourself